Alright, so the Nothing Phone has been out for around half a year, and by now I think it's safe to say that we all know this phone gets a lot right. And that's impressive not only because this is a first gen product from a young company, but also because the smartphone market is pretty loaded right now, and it's only getting more and more saturated making it harder to stand out. But Nothing's hat is in the ring now, and I think they're off to a solid start. So recently, I popped my SIM back into the Phone 1 to give it another run as my day-to-day -day phone. Now, I'm in the US, I'm on the T-Mobile network, I bought this phone myself, and I'm not running any betas at the moment. I just wanted to throw that out there. Using the Phone 1 has been nice. It's a big phone, but it's relatively lightweight, making it easier to use the phone for long periods of time. The display is crisp, it's colorful, and it's smooth. It doesn't get super bright, but that's fine. I also gotta give a thumbs up for the choice to go with a flat display. Yes, this is a form factor that isn't unfamiliar, but it's got a look that never fails to be a conversation starter, especially when I'm out at dinner and I take advantage of the flip to glyph function. I always get asked what phone this is. I never got tired of this look. It's a modern take on an old school aesthetic, and I think I'll always be a fan. And as for that glyph interface, I know a lot of people find this light show to be a gimmick, and a lot of people find it to be useful. I can see the argument for both sides, but personally, I wouldn't call it a gimmick. It's the coolest notification light ever. It's a neat charging indicator, and being able to use it as a fill light for photos just makes sense. Either way, I think it's fun, I think it's cool, and I want to see nothing continue to build on this. And this is me talking after the honeymoon phase. While the hype has died down, I still enjoy the fact that this is here. Over time, the phone's gotten a good number of updates, all of which share a nice and fun-looking change log, and these tweaks have improved performance in certain areas, they've ironed out some wrinkles here and there, and you can see the level of detail that goes into making the experience the best it can be. Things haven't been perfect though, I'll explain in a sec, but it's nice to see a brand being receptive to and genuinely interested in community feedback. Now using this on T-Mobile has been fine. I understand that it's not fully compatible with 5G, I believe only a couple of bands are supported, but I didn't really have any complaints when it came to using the phone while out and about out and about. <laughs> Admittedly, I didn't perform any speed tests or anything like that, I just wanted to use the phone as I normally would, and when it came to streaming videos and music and downloading applications, GPS usage, I don't remember there being any negatives that stood out. What did stand out, however, is that while a number of bugs did get squashed by updates, like the one where auto-rotate decided it didn't want to work properly, I did experience some new ones. In certain isolated incidents, like a couple of times using the phone while in a phone call, while the phone was charging, uh, things would get pretty glitchy and the phone would act up a bit. I also saw some weird frame rate issues here and there, but nothing that stuck around for long. I'm not going to sweat it as these things can be fixed just like the other stuff from before. Overall, the user experience here has been good. The phone is fast and smooth, the fingerprint scanner is solid, uh, the haptics are decent and handled well by the software, the speakers get the job done, the phone doesn't get super hot during heavy use, and it performs daily tasks as well as any other high-end device. The software just needs some more polishing. Battery life has been good as well. With light use, I can get a full 24 plus hour day on a single charge. With more moderate to heavy usage, the battery endured it well and I was easily able to clock in and average 6 to 7 hours of screen on time on a single charge with a little bit of juice left before I head to bed. I never experienced any strange battery drain or anything like that and performance has leveled out well. I do wish that the charging speeds were faster, but I guess I can't complain too much because it's not painfully slow and heck, it charges faster than the Pixel 7 Pro. And I am glad wireless and reverse wireless charging are here too. Now when it comes to the cameras, this is the area that has seen the biggest improvement over time. And when you start comparing results to everything else that's out there, you'll see that while these aren't the absolute best cameras on the market and you can find better in this price range, the cameras are still pretty good. And all of these updates have made noticeable differences, so thumbs up to nothing for that. We've seen improved color consistency between the wide and ultra wide lenses, there's improved detail, audio quality and stabilization in video capture, and more. Low light results have gotten better too, which is nice. So the cameras are definitely not in the same tier as the best of the best, but they hold their own, and in this price range, they are more than capable. Nothing holds a lot of pride in these cameras, and I respect the work that has gone into making them better. Now, you've probably seen this new beta membership, Nothing Started. Now, I won't get too deep into the nitty gritty. You can check it out for yourself. There's a link below. But basically, this is a way for the US market to get its hands on the phone one to test it out since it wasn't available initially. Emphasis 
on test. So you can grab a Nothing Phone 1 for $299, loaded with beta software centered around Android 13, and the program runs until June 30th of this year. Keep in mind, this is a beta test, and Nothing makes it clear that overall usability probably won't be what you would want it to be because this device wasn't made to be fully compatible here in the US. But if you know what you're getting into, I say it's worth a look. At around 500 bucks, the Phone 1 was already one of the best in its class. I've even seen a number of users happily pick this over the Pixel 7. Nothing does have a pretty big and very supportive following. Now there's some work that needs to be done for sure, but the future is bright if things are executed properly. I've enjoyed using the Nothing Phone 1. All things considered, the phone has gotten better over time. I'm looking forward to the full release of Android 13, which should be here soon, and from what I've seen, the beta has some nice additions and tweaks including a dedicated weather app, new glyph animations, and more. So what do you think of the Nothing Phone 1 as we start 2023? Let's talk about it in the comments. If you made it to this point of the video, I want you to drop a parrot emoji in the comments too. If you know, you know. Hope you enjoyed, it's been Zach, and thanks for watching.